Welcome back to the Seven Rivers Racing Show here in KQEG. It's brought to you by Kerry Heating and Air Conditioning, West Salem Pharmacy, the home of American Legion, and our friends right there, Lost Lake Beer. It's going to be Beer City here in a couple of months. It's going to be warm this week. Get the snow out of there. Get some repairs. The track's done. And we're going to go racing. We are. I'm anxious for uh, Dave to put up a picture of the racetrack with no snow on it. I like that green grass and, and whatnot. Talking about that, the opening practice night media day for the Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway is coming up on April 16th. The first night of racing will be the weekend following, and you're going to see our guest today in one division. Going to be a busy man this year. He drives the 195 uh, Quick Trip NASCAR late model Harley Jankowski of Sparta. Hey, Harley, how are you, buddy? Yeah, it's just the 95. Just the 95. The okay. 195 is the Hornet. 195 is the Hornet. That's what it is. The Hornet with the uh, the deer antlers on top of it. Uh, off season is here, and for some drivers, they want it to be a little bit longer. Some drivers can't wait to go racing right now. Which one are you? Uh, could wait an extra month or so. <laughs> to get everything together? or uh... Yeah. Well, Harley drives. Uh, now, you finished your uh, rookie season at lacrosse last year. Uh, finishing 14th in points behind some very good competition. Uh, some of the rookies that were out there, especially Troy Rave, uh, were really tearing it up. But um, you had to feel comfortable finishing 14th in points last year. Yeah, my goal was to do better than my dad, which mm -hmm. was win a race, and I won a couple. And I qualified top 14 a couple times, and I exceeded my goal. Well, your dad finished 47th in points, so, you know, there's some good talk around the <laughs> dinner table. Well, he didn't, he was mostly crew chief. And he does. He is one of the most, and you're one of the, those teams that has a relatively small pit crew. You have uh, two people that work on your car. Uh, first off, let our viewers know who those two individuals are that are hard working every Saturday. Uh, Jeremy Johnson. Uh, and my dad's girlfriend, Cindy. And your dad, obviously. And my dad. Do a nice job. It's uh, one of those teams that uh, um, doesn't have the sponsorships like some do, which is, you know, which is, there's no problem with that. If you're a small-time team that can still be very competitive like you have, um, it shows that you don't have to have all the money in the world to go out and, and, and run in a uh, late model class. Uh, you finished 14th in late models. Now, you also run uh, a couple of races in Thunderstocks, which that's where you had originated from uh, a couple of years ago before you had told me that you were going to jump into a late model class. Uh, 31st in points of the Thunderstocks, but you only ran a couple of races last year. Yeah, I actually only ran one race because we didn't have the right rear end in the car. Yeah, it was just good to get your feet wet with the Thunderstock guys and yeah. more, some more banging. <laughs> yeah, I had to get her out of the weeds for at least one night. What would you say, uh, I mean, not a lot of people can go from a Thunderstock right into a late model, and as long as I've been at lacrosse, I think you may be the only one I've seen do that so far. How much of, of an adjustment was it to go from Thunderstock and a quarter mile to late model on the 5A solo? Uh, it's very different, because the late model has the, the sticky tires, which you can throw it in like three times as far which the Thunderstock has the street tires, which you just slide all over the place. It has no grip. What about the adjustments on the inside of the car? I mean, obviously, some have race seats in the Thunderstock, some don't. And if you look at the compartment, like we were looking at Jay Herb's car last week, there's so much more intricacies behind um, the, the cockpit of a late model compared to a Thunderstock. Did that take you to a while to adjust to a much small atmosphere? No, not really. I like because it makes you feel more safe when you're in there. It's like the Thunderstock car, you don't really feel that safe because there's not, you're not really supposed to do anything to it. Do you feel that there's a big adjustment in your mindset when you have to go from a Thunderstock to a late model? Yeah, the horsepower, it's like amazing feeling when you hit the gas, you go when you drove that uh, Thunderstock, did you do that on the same night you drove the, the late model also? Yeah. Did you feel that when you got into the late model, did you feel almost like you were a little bit out of place? No, actually, I felt more out of place in the Thunderstock than the late model. It, the late models are so much more comfortable and they're easier to drive, mm -hmm. but the adjustments, there's so much. 
and the competition so much more out on the big track. Mm -hmm. So you go from a late model to a Thunderstock into a Hornet, which uh, you've become a fan favorite at lacrosse running a Hornet. The 195, it's the orange and black. Is it a Honda Civic? Yep, 91 Honda Civic hatchback. With the uh, with the deer antlers on top. Now, as long as I've been at lacrosse, you've won some some Enduros. You've won some, uh, some pretty good sized races out there in the Hornet. Yeah, I only won one Enduro, but I usually get top five in all of them. Get me back out in the uh, in the horned car this week or this year. Definitely. <laughs> it's always a good time to see Harley out there. So you're gonna run uh, late models full time at lacrosse. Now you're gonna run uh, a full time schedule Thunderstocks at Toma this year. Yep, I'm gonna run for my first championship. Hopefully, I can get it. Now, have you have you raced on that track before? I mean, do you, I mean, obviously, you know some folks that have and. And if you look at drivers like today, you've got the Millers and you've got the Warthens um, and the Schulzes. I know their dads, uh, Billy, yeah, Billy Miller and, and uh, Schulze, Steve Schulze. You know they raced on that track. Have they told you how to drive that track yet? No, not at all. Like that's where my uncle Corey got his start. Is that Toma and my dad raced there a long time ago. I remember when I was a little kid going there watching them race and stuff. But other than that. I've never even been on the track. Do you think it's going to take you a while to adjust to racing a Thunderstock on that track compared to lacrosse? Because because that track is that's all it is geared for primarily is is one big track where lacrosse is a track inside another track. Do you feel that's going to be a different adjustment? No, I don't think so. Cause like my first time running a different track was at Rockford, and for the national short track championships and I finished third in the feature my first time there so in what kind of vehicle the Thunderstock Thunderstocks. now you're also going to run um, you're going to run Bahama Rockets again this year yeah that's a good time down there for our viewers that don't know fill us in on what are the Bahama Rockets because I know the top prize is pretty pretty nice well the Bahama Brackets is a uh, well, bracket racing which it's all done by time doesn't matter what your car, there's not no rules, except for like weight, but you run what you brung and you go by time. Now how well have you done uh, at the brackets in the past? I've only went there, this was my first year, and I qualified third in the AAA bracket, which there's four brackets, and then I didn't do so good, so I had to start in the back but I won the last chance race. And that was my first win down there, so I was happy with that. That's gonna be kind of interesting because it's not like you're racing against the same drivers of lacrosse every weekend. These are drivers from all over the place. And I know Brad Worthen won the Bahama Brackets a couple of years ago, and they give you a chance of taking the cash over, taking the trip to the Bahamas, and Brad took the cash to paint his car pink. <laughs> <laughs> Harley Jankowski, our guest in the Seven Rivers Racing Show. Today, when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about not one, but two, but three cars, and what it takes to maintain those three cars, and the time differences between those three. Of course, one can sit in the weeds all year long, one uh, maybe half the season, the other one's probably be sitting in the garage. Harley Jankowski, our guest on the Seven Rivers Racing Show here in KQEG.